Hey everyone, my name is Keshav and I'm the producer for episode 19. Today's conversation is with Casey Bryant, who is a McGill University alumni and completed her CPA with KPMG Calgary. After spending some time in the audit practice, she now is a talent attraction manager for KPMG, where she leads a team to recruit co-ops, internships, and full-time positions in the Calgary office. And she joins Sam to discuss how associates in public practice have really changed in terms of their roles and their education backgrounds and life experiences, and also what a day in the life is for uh, someone like Casey in her role. Uh, she has some full-time positions coming live on August 20th. I've linked um, to her website uh, where those will go live and also her LinkedIn to contact her. And of course, Sam's info is there as well. Thanks and enjoy this episode. Good morning, Casey. Hello. Well, and good afternoon to you, Sam. Thank you. So um, I was a bit of an idiot when we booked this. Um, it is Stampede. It is. The <laughs> Calgary Stampede greatest outdoor show on earth is, is well underway. Um, I, like being a former Calgarian, I knew the rules. It's like no <laughs> work gets done during Stampede, no meetings, no, like, I'm, like it's rude of me to ask you to be holed up and having this conversation. Um, so double, triple thank you in advance for being here um, and connecting with me so that we can connect um, with our DAL students, our DAL alums. So thank you so much. No, no, it's my, my absolute pleasure. Honestly, this is a very fun thing to be doing during Stampede. And also, it's a little different this year. I mean, we're not in the office. There's not as much of that, I would say, social component. And, and normally, our Calgary office would like be totally dead this week, but we actually had some time off last week instead. So very happy to be here on my on my Thursday during Stampede. <laughs> oh man. So before we get into it, I'm gonna throw a bit of a side. I'm gonna start with the most difficult question first. Um, is that okay? Would that be okay? Yeah, get it, get it over with. Okay. So if someone took your personal cell phone, wait, do you have a personal and a work phone? Just the one phone. Okay. So if somebody took your one phone <laughs> away from you and um, they would only give it back under the condition and you couldn't buy a new one, <laughs> like you couldn't, like this is the only cell phone um, that you're allowed to have. Um, okay. And they would only give it back on the condition uh, that you could only have three apps on there for the next six months. Which apps Ooh. would those be? Um, music. So Spotify. I'm a Spotify or not an Apple Me user. Um, I think I got to go Google Chrome. Yeah. And I'm going to say the, the phone app versus messages. Ooh, yes. Because I would rather call someone, have a good conversation than, than text. And knowing I couldn't text but I, or sorry, knowing I couldn't call, but I had to text. I wouldn't like that. I'd rather get on the phone. Yeah, so I would say yeah that's three. fair. And my, my work email isn't included in, the, in those three. <laughs> <laughs> you have to like be able to pay the cell phone bill <laughs> if they took away that ability. No, it's actually funny that you should bring up like the, the phone application and not like, oh, like WhatsApp. Because I know that like my parents, if I was like, oh, see you on WhatsApp, like, they'd be like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I was fortunate enough with them, um, even before the pandemic, they downloaded Skype. So I still have Skype for that one conversation every Sunday. And I oh. love it because I don't dare ask them to get a new platform. <laughs> actually it's funny that you mentioned that because literally I was on the phone with my with my mom last night and she mentioned how much she hates whatsapp so yeah, I can relate so that's the phone <laughs> application cool um yeah and do you find yourself talking on the phone for like work or I don't know or like personal functions more so after this past like year uh year plus of COVID or are you pretty much like a solo like video person uh, that's a good question. I would say probably not on the phone any more or less than I would have been before. Uh, you know, I kind of have my main, my, mo my main phone contacts being my family, my boyfriend. And then, um, from a work perspective, um, I would say I'm very much more so on video. I try to try to do that as much as possible. And yeah. I think at the beginning, when we first transitioned, everybody hated being on video. 
Um, and then slowly people got more used to it. And, and it's kind of the norm now is that you turn on your video. You almost have to apologize when you're not on video, which is totally yeah. fine. You need those moments in the day when you're like, I don't want to be yeah, having to worry about that. I just want to chat. Yeah, no, completely. Although I will say that like in the past, if you were on video and tell me if this has been your experience too. Um, and somebody was like, perhaps like just came from a workout or they weren't like quite, you know, what they would deem presentable. Um, now that like where they used to apologize or like make a caveat, like, oh, I'm sorry, I just came from the gym, like, had, you know, ran late. Now they're just like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I them. That has very much been, been which I favorite. love because I don't know, so much of this is, you know, sometimes show and it's like, well, don't show me, don't tell me, just do it. Right. Like, can you back up what you say you're going to do? Um, and that's, you know, and are you, a genuinely like good decent kind person right are you gonna deliver so I don't know I kind of like that we've gone through this year and we've kind of gone through a lot of like new norms and then I think coming out stronger what do you think I agree well I'm sure you know from a student perspective you know seeing all their profs in kind of in their workspace whatever that be whatever that be and you know maybe their kid comes on maybe their dog comes on the camera like that just I think it kind of puts everybody on in Cool. puts everybody at ease and kind of puts this new lens right and it's like okay we are all human <laughs> and uh we're all dealing with different things at home and and what have you and um I think it, it's just uh it's a really cool new way to know your your coworkers and your peers and your superiors absolutely okay so we like to bounce around here because linear is is boring and you mentioned students so you know what I do um, day in, day out, um, you know, a little bit different here and there, uh, being at the summer, but, um, Casey, let's start at the end and then we'll work our way to there. So we already said that you're in Calgary. Um, what's your main gig? What do you spend your Monday to Friday and perhaps then some on? Um, so I've been at KPMG since, uh, since 2016. Well, I did a, a summer internship in 2015 joined the firm here in Calgary 2016. I used to be an auditor. So I got my CPA, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about later. Oh yeah, no, 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 you're, you are, <laughs> no, I'm gonna pause a little bit. So was, did you go to school in Calgary or? I went to McGill, McGill in Montreal. Um, so we did, yep, four years Are you bilingual? There. I am, I am, Amazing. our parents. Yeah, our parents put us in, in French immersion. So I was in that from, from K to 12 and then, head out to Montreal and I barely used it. <laughs> so uh, it's very much an, an English bubble in the, in the McGill, in the McGill bubble. So I would try to make a conscious effort to, you know, use it at the grocery store or like at the odd restaurant, but it very much has, has declined since I graduated high school, but I can still technically say I'm bilingual. Oh no, I, like, I am so, so jealous. Um, and you know what, we all make choices. So if I made it more of a priority, uh, I'm sure like I'm a big girl, but it's such an amazing um, tool and you know, such a beautiful language and being in Canada, right? So um, that's amazing. Yeah. I just never really run into people from Calgary <laughs> necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's more so out here um, yes. <laughs> that it's more, more prevalent. So that's super cool. Okay, sorry, we'll bounce back to the back, but let's bounce to the beginning. What, um, what is your current like role and title if we were gonna, we have to put you into like one box um, yeah. right now. So my formal title is Talent Attraction Manager for Campus Recruiting here in Calgary. At KPMG. So, at KPMG. Okay. So I oversee uh, hiring for all students. So whether that be they're looking for summer internships, for co-ops, um, for full-time opportunities after they graduate. Um, that is that is my portfolio. And uh, while I work with uh, my counterparts across the country, I am solely recruiting for our Calgary office. Okay, so now before um, we start getting some comments down below, hey Sam, when did you start taking on advertisers? What's going on here? Is this a recruiting package? It's like, first off, um, I'm from Calgary and I have deep roots there. Um, I articled at a big four, although not KPMG. So, um, but the one uh, main reason I wanted to have Casey on here is that like Claire, um, well, maybe Casey, how about you tell them how we know each other? Uh, so funnily enough, um, I attended one of Sam's um, tax workshops while in the CPA program. So rewind back to, I think it was 2018. 
um, tax was my, my third module. So my first elective, and it was the hardest one by far. Um, yes. And during the CPA, you are required to go to these weekend long workshops. And Sam was my instructor. Um, and I felt so much better after the workshop. Thank you. Completely honestly. I, I remember that very, very specifically. And we actually went through, you know, concrete examples and um, versus it just being more kind of floofy and like, oh, don't worry, tax is fine, you'll be okay. Um, so that was in 2018. And then fast forward to 2020. Hold on, hold on. I just, I want to go back to 2018 because that's yes. when I started Adele in January. And then I had done, I had done like spent every other weekend for the past like two years doing different workshops. So tax assurance, like I, I liked all of them except for I never did finance. There's just people, there's CFAs, there's CBVs out there that they got that. Um, and mm -hmm. I am not about, I don't think I could add as much value as they could. And so hit 2018 and I really missed it, but I started Adele. So I strategically kind of worked in and flew home to visit my parents uh, who live in Calgary and would work a weekend. And it, so you were probably part of like my last ever tax workshop. So I oh, like, no way. thank you. Um, <laughs> for saying it's hard because I'm not going to lie. Um, that is the one that I definitely, uh, when I kind of transitioned to education consulting um, full time, that was the, the big one where I put a lot of extra effort in because it is something that I don't deal with on um, in such depth, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, mm -hmm. I have a corp, I you know, have dealt with the principles. I like the integration, but that is a big module. And like you said, there's a lot of um, a lot of like nerves and a lot of like things. And so packing it full of value was something that I really, um, while making it like still go by without just <laughs> dumping. So thank you. So it's kind of neat that we kind of. Yes, absolutely. Have that connection. And one thing, Sam, too, what I always remember, and I feel like I almost took this, this phrase as my own after, I remember you always saying, um, do like enough is enough. Um, totally. you know, you don't have like, with CPA, you can spend endless hours continuing to learn, um, but knowing what the right amount to, to study, to work on, understanding that bound and setting that boundary for yourself too, because you're working, you're doing CPA, you also want to have social life or family life, whatever that may be. Yeah. And so understanding that. Um, and I always remember you, you saying that as well. And that stuck with me for sure. I am honored and a <laughs> believer and pleased. Um, I'm glad you took it, like you absorbed it and took it on as your own. It is, it is yours and it is everybody's and it's so impactful and it's not, um, yeah, too often we are told, well, if you're dedicated, this would be your focus, but like, at what point are you, or have we achieved enough? So that we can, you know, have things that we enjoy too. And I would offer, mm -hmm. um, it, it's a practice. So it's a practice within the case. It's a practice within the CP and it's a practice in our own lives. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Oh, thank you. Um, you also probably notice a theme or I, I definitely noticed the theme within myself is that, um, oftentimes things that I say, um, are things that I'm constantly learning and relearning and reminding myself um mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I try to have a few um because yeah um sometimes like when shit hits the fan and it gets really busy and you feel like you have 26 hours worth of work and you have you know six quality ones to do them um a few others in like meetings that you know are unavoidable and then you know you you're up at seven or whatever and then down it's uh, and you're like where did my day go so it's it's a skill. So for anybody that says, I don't have enough time, I don't know. I just think we all have the same amount. Um, some of us have a lot of really like other big commitments outside. Others of us don't. It's not about saying what's fair, what's not. It's about saying, what is my first priority? And then knocking that out. And then how can I do that towards enough? And then saying, okay, what is enough today? What is my best look like today? Um, and knowing that you can always come back. Like if you get done studying, like, um, I don't know, a chapter of the ebook, and it's enough, put it away because you can, you can always come back. It's not I going anywhere. <laughs> no, I, I literally, I couldn't agree more. Um, I'm, I, I do say that a lot about when people say I don't have time. Um, I mean, sometimes that can be, you know, literally true. and I appreciate, yeah, we all have a lot going on, but it's, it's all about, yeah, prioritizing and understanding. Yeah. 
let's look at today. What needs to get done? What do I want to get done? What's yeah. going to also enhance my day? What's going to make me happy? Yeah. Uh, so figuring out, and that's always a balance. Um, and, and honestly, not even a balance sometimes, right? It's just, oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, continually working through it and things change and, and uh, it's never going to be perfect. And just learning to accept that and, and hopefully figuring out what works for you. And that's going to change all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And when we can being kind to others who we see are maybe struggling that day. And if we have a little bit of extra capacity, you know, lending a hand um, and then it kind of comes back. It's a cool, um, I find it as accountants. Um, and even though you're not, you know, working quote unquote in audit anymore, or, you know, as an accountant, like same mm -hmm. as me, I do accounting, you do accounting. We're involved in accounting, but we're not, it's not our main sole like focus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just important to kind of Sorry, I, don't I think, know I think, no, no, I think um, if I'll, I'll jump in here and yeah. I feel like what you were maybe trying to get to is that our, our foundation is very much that, that team, right? Yes. That team yeah. And learn and knowing when to jump in. Yeah. And then <laughs> that you're I, I was setting you up for that. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, yeah, that give and take, like lending a hand when someone else needs it and know that you're going to get the same back. I feel like that's very much a, an auditor's, um, <sighs> like yeah. mindset. Absolutely. Okay. So I think we kind of alluded to your path to getting to where you are at Talent Attraction. I don't know. I, I want to hear, I, maybe just um, confirm or correct, because we have had a few different guests on who did the university um, to the firm. So did you take any time off in between school and the firm? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I graduated. It's nice um, at KPMG and, and most big four, right? You uh, graduate, say, in April. And then you typically have the summer off before you start in the fall. So uh, that was kind of, I had that, you know, four Perfect. or five months, which yes. was great. Um, and then start started. refreshed, write in assurance. Yes. Pardon? Write in assurance. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, write an audit. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You got it. Not, yeah. Um, Sorry. Some firms call it audit. Some call it assurance. Some call it yeah. audit and assurance. And then I'm sure some others call it <clears throat> something else. else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you did the CPA modules. So you did the core one, core two, and then tax and assurance, capstone one, capstone two, and you did it in about a year and a half ish. Um, so no, I've actually got a bit of a funny background yeah. because so when I was at McGill, I actually did the um, human resource and industrial relations major um, within the commerce program. So that was my major was, was HR and I minored in accounting. Uh, so it was from actually a, a family influence that I applied for KPMG and did an internship. Uh, and then basically when it was, um, time to go back to school for my fourth year, I basically had a decision to make to accept a full-time offer with KPMG in audit, do my CPA, um, or gamble with like an entry level HR position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the time. Uh, it was, you know, the beginning of the downturn in Calgary. And so those kind of entry level HR positions were yes. the first to go. Yes. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, it was September of, of 2015, I accepted my, my full-time offer to join the firm the next fall. Um, and I'm so happy I did that. So in my first year um, at KPMG, I had a few prereq prerequisite mm. courses to finish up on the accounting side. And so I didn't start core one until... Uh, the following year. And so it took me closer to three, four years to wrap everything up from a CPA perspective. So when you took the prereqs, did you take them through CPA, like their, their prep program? Yes, I did. Yeah. I had four to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So then you would have been kind of quote, like a year ahead. So if anything, and I bring this up, um, when you were Kind of working compared to your studying um, and perhaps some of your work peers and many people would say that that means you have an extra year's worth of responsibilities an extra year's worth of staff on you know on different audits um mm -hmm. how did you find uh, the working and the studying knowing that you had this um studying pardon me for pep for the cpa modules um with that extra kind of responsibility relative to the peers that were perhaps taking the same modules or did you notice a difference yeah, that's, that's a good question. I would say for the most part, I don't think my experience was too much different than say, say the, 
individuals in, in the year below me. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the prep courses, um, as annoying as it was to have to do those while my peers were, you know, starting core one and core two. Um, it was kind of nice because I got an intro to CPA. So I got to understand how the exam software worked and, but the, the courses themselves were not as rigorous. Um, you didn't have, you know, as uh, like the weekly assignments and, and all that. And the, um, and the exams were, I would say, easier to pass and, and like certainly easier. Yeah. And then easier than they would be in university. Oh. So it, well, at least that, that was my experience. Well, and it's funny because you just, you're taking it from the perspective of somebody who has a university degree, who goes back mm -hmm. to school. So like at that point you were like, you got the study techniques. You're like, yeah. I yeah. know exactly what's going to be on. I know what to study. So I don't know, give yourself some credit too. I think you probably brought a lot of hard work and smart work uh, to the table, uh, which is super cool. So I bring this up because oftentimes Students, learners, candidates, oh, in fact, later on as adults, we tend to worry and say, oh, I didn't do this soon enough, or oh, I didn't, you know, do this then, or oh, it's too late, or, you know, and we've had a mom on this um, podcast who did her CPA, who came from England, um, was told that none of her prereqs counted, had to do all of PERT with two kids, and then CPA, and now she's a director and nonprofit in Calgary. Um, so, like, she's blazed her own path and she got to done and you know how to life you know how you know like she's busy but focused so there's I like to just bring up different you know anecdotes and like bring people and faces here because there is very well somebody that you know me have took one of my accounting courses or you know maybe none of them maybe they're in first year um maybe they're in third year and took you know a bunch of other things and they're like oh well it's too late now it's too late now so, you know, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, <laughs> and absolutely. And we constantly see, you know, because obviously I, I get a ton of requests from, yeah. from students all the time to chat. And honestly, the like from high school to university to graduating in four years, that is, I feel like not even the norm anymore. People, they might try out sciences or engineering and then they come to accounting. They might do a full degree before then and maybe work for a little bit and then come and do something else you know people are constantly changing what they want to do and and uh and you know we'll have families in between and so that changes things mm. and, and uh so I feel like we see so much more often not the kind of cookie cutter path you know more and more often I would say so it's great um to hear that especially because a uh, part of why um I'm so happy that you agreed to come on here is so that we can do another catch up, but also, so yeah. It, and as much as you're allowed to, and as much as you feel comfortable, I would love to lift the veil a bit on what is it like out of my own curiosity. And also like as a student, I wish I would have like known this, like what, um, so yeah. How do you, when students come to you with those questions or how do they even get in contact Would they just email and say like, hey, I'm, I've finished a science degree or, you know, I took this meandering path. Do, how do the questions typically come forward to you to inquire about that? And then how do you respond? So it'll kind of be a mix of perhaps they know someone at the firm or have been, you know, connected through a client maybe, or they just find me on LinkedIn and they'll send me a message and say, uh, you know, either they're an accounting student right now, or they've like just transitioned into into the accounting uh, industry or you know have switched over majors what have you and basically they are usually reaching out to learn more about KPMG and what opportunities we have so uh, you know I usually will have somewhat of the same response to all of them is it's like explaining how our cycles work throughout the year how our recruiting cycles work um, what we have coming up and then for the most part, uh, what we'll do is we kind of have a, a master contact list. They'll get added to that so that they, that we keep in touch with them and they can know what's, what's upcoming. Um, so yeah, we get, you know, a ton of requests from, from all different kinds of students. And, uh, and it's always like, it doesn't matter um, if you're in accounting, if you're doing your CPA. And also sometimes even if you're not, you know, we have other opportunities that I oversee as well. Um, it's like, yeah, come check us out, come find out what we're all about. And hopefully we'll see you at some events and see an application come through. Oh, amazing. Okay, cool. Because yeah, I feel like, so I articled uh, over 10 years ago and I do feel 
um, like seeing now be on the educator side. And even when I still do sessions here and there for CPA, I love the diversity of candidates coming through. Um, age is experience. I have like, I love being in the classroom and seeing there was one person who had her undergrad in neuroscience, um, you know, and it just enriches. There's people with children, there's older people who are on second or third careers. Um, mm -hmm. There's people from different countries. Like, it's just, it's such a good, uh, and then, you know, there's still people that, you know, did the university firm, like, you know, like you or I, and, you know, so but everybody gets to mix together and it's just mm -hmm. so much richer of a work experience. So it sounds like that's what KPMG does as well. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to do a little plug here because I feel like this ties in so well with our, um, we just um, were notified of our new KPMG fall campaign. And one of the slogans is, come as you are. Love and I feel like what we're, Yes, agree. I'm going to totally steal that one. Okay, we'll go one for one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think it's just so appropriate, especially in the time we're living in right now and also just what we're talking about. It's, you know, um, very much... I would say in the past, always talking about that kind of culture fit, if you will. And what we really like to promote is uh, culture add. We are constantly mm. adding to what our firm is. And as you say, it, it makes it a much richer experience for everybody. It makes all of us better at work and better as people. Completely. And so they, our employer brand team, uh, hit it right on the nail. With it. <laughs> Come as you are. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. Okay. So I was just curious about you and your role and, you know, at, keep bringing in the student perspective because of course this is our audience. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, and I'm curious as well, but I'm wondering what does like, hmm, I'm going to ask you both about an average day or like a typical day. Like, what does it look like in let's take the COVID environment or like the current kind of, cause you're in Calgary. So I feel like the measure is like, you're allowed to go back to the office. Okay, so let's yes. take like an average day from the new normal um, okay. in Calgary. And then like, what do the cycles look like throughout your year? And like, when do they hit you busy? Um, and then what are you busy kind of doing? So you can take either or macro or micro, and then we'll flip flop to the other one. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So um, kind of day to day, what's, what's great about my job is it's, uh, and that's very much too, I would, I'm sure you would agree, uh, life and audit, it's different day to day. Um, and so, you know, a lot of my day is spent communicating with students and then also my counterparts, my clients. So my clients being, um, obviously, I mean, students are, are my clients, but also people from the business that I'm working with to get them people hired. So, you know, so sorry, who a lot those of those be like, give me an example. So for instance, so I mean, um, the audit practice generally are, is one of my clients, um, because we need, you know, 40 to 50 new starts every year. Um, and then also, um, if we're looking at say from a co-op or summer internship perspective, um, there's also like, um, partners and hiring managers within our management consulting practice, within our deal advisory practice, within our tax practice. So I'm also supporting them because they are, they're looking for people as well. So they would talk to you and you, you would talk to them and you'd have a conversation about kind of the amount of people, the type of people, the experience, like just um, the interests that different people have or skills um, that they kind of bring or what do those conversations kind of look like? Yeah, great question. So I'll give you an example. So um, we, so generally like the main component of my job and who I hire is mainly for our audit practice. But what we do have in Calgary is called the Avenues Program. And so there is the opportunity for our individuals to spend some time, say, in tax during the year or like in management consulting or in internal audit risk compliance. Um, so there is some, some different opportunities there. Um, now, for as our practice continues to grow, let's look at management consulting. So I had a conversation with um, our partner from our people and change practice. Um, so it was actually my first time really chatting with him. So I met with him to learn more about the kind of people, like, first of all, what does people and change actually do? Um, and it sounds really interesting. It's basically helping, um, HR functions at a company transform, looking at their mm. organizational structure, their processes and, and what needs to be improved. Yeah. So finding out about that and then finding out from a campus perspective, are they looking for any new grads and how can I help them do that? 
basically. Perfect. So yeah, it would be working with uh, various stakeholders in the company to kind of do that same thing. And, and you right where you're focused on Calgary. Yes, this is all. Yeah, exactly. All within and Calgary. Do you ever contact, like, are you ever in contact with like your counterparts in like Toronto or Vancouver? Um, and like, do you share best practices and tips or like what, what are those conversations Constantly. talk like? Yeah. Constantly. I, what I tell people a lot is what I really, really like about my role is that I get to work with the HR team in Calgary. And so we all do different things. And then I get to work with my national talent attraction team. And then I also get to work with people from the business. So from a national talent attraction team, um, basically we have our like national team. Um, and so they kind of oversee everybody across the country. And then I have all my counterparts. So I have a me in Vancouver. I have a me in Winnipeg. I have a me in Montreal and, and Toronto. Uh, and we are constantly working together. I mean, yesterday we had a three hour working session to talk about our upcoming fall recruitment cycle. And awesome. we're always exchanging ideas, working with each other, collaborating. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's really great. Fabulous. Okay. So you, yeah, you just cycle back to like your average day. Sorry that I interrupted. So no. it's speaking with um, various clients. So internal stakeholders, um, students, um, potential hires. Um, mm -hmm. What else? What else and who else? So a lot too, kind of what falls under my portfolio, if you will, is um, onboarding. So we've got, uh, so if we look at say this year, we've got, you know, 40, new first years starting in October. And so I'm, I'm in charge of them right now. They haven't started with us, but I'm constantly in communication with them um, about kind of what's coming. They'll all get questions a lot um, about like what, you know, when are they going to hear about their specific start date or um, they're having an issue with CPA, like finding out about reimbursement for fees, things like that. So I'm also um, responsible for them. And then two, like right now, we've got our summer interns in the office mm. in the office. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, t I'm more or less in charge of them. They're doing client work and they're on different engagements, but I kind of oversee the program in Calgary. And so we're also, you know, dealing with them, answering questions, Amazing. Um, things for them. So it's a really wide variety. No doubt. Oh. <laughs> All right. So does that cap off an average day? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. That's yeah. And and honestly, just also a lot of emails, just a lot of emails about any and everything. Yeah. yeah. I like the working, um, the working group when you say like, yeah, we just get together and get stuff done. I think that's really important because sometimes I know for my, my own self, even though, you know, I do a lot of work where maybe it is like me overseeing like a team or, you know, working solo. Sometimes when you do those collaborations, rather than going back and forth on emails, which we both get a ton of, it's like, hey, let's just sit in a room, let's put on the document and let's just attack this. And, um, and it feels so good. And then we get some like human, human interaction and some other things flow from that. So I'm glad that that's still like a part of your like day to day. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I even like one thing that we like to use is the Microsoft Teams. That's our, our main platform that we use at KPMG. Um, it's like the whiteboard function and just mm -hmm. like brainstorming. And we were talking about, you know, um, party ideas or social ideas and having, you know, eight minds think of new things versus just me being like, oh, can we play some games on Zoom? Like, what else can we do? And so mm -hmm. getting uh, insights into more ideas and, and you know, strength in numbers and two brains are better than one. Absolutely. Love that. Okay. So that's the micro. What is the, like the annual cycle look like, um, like for talent attraction? Um, and for you, how do you, how does it fit in with you and like your role for throughout the year? Good question. So I'll start, I'll start in January. Um, we'll go calendar year. So what's kind of nice. I get <laughs> Love it. At the and total flip. So, cause I've, I've only been in this role for about seven months. I, I switched from audit before Christmas. So this January was my first year in five years that I didn't jump into busy season in January, which was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice change of pace. I was, um, say, so I was like, that's a good timing. <laughs> it was really, it was really good timing. Um, so if we look at January, we normally have a national program that kick, kicks off at that time. So again, um, working nationally, we have our, what we call our candidate experience team and, and they help organize what is now basically an innovation challenge. And so that is the 
Um, and what it's called is KIC, so KPMG, KPMG Ideation Challenge. Mm. So it used to be a case competition and it's kind of evolved over the last couple of years. So we'll have some sort of national program at the beginning of the year. Um, and what's nice, it's still, you know, pretty quiet. I would say January to March is a, like a pretty quiet time. And the We've case competition, or sorry, the kick, um, the former that was evolved from the case competition, is that something that it's national and is, who is it directed to? Undergrad students or? Yeah, okay. you got it. So yeah, it's, um, it's a nationally run challenge, but um, in each of the, what we call geos, so essentially offices, but there are some that are kind of grouped together, um, is we, like students apply to participate and we're mostly looking for students earlier on in university. So kind of first to third year students. Nice. Okay. And so what's really great about it is students who have never done a case competition or any, anything similar, uh, they should feel comfortable to apply. We have no expectations. We're going to take them through how to do something like this. Um, and it's a great opportunity to network and, and try something new. And when um, the successful applicants get in, are they solo or do you group them or like, how does it? Yeah, yeah they'll be grouped. So if you're um, applying, if you applied to Calgary, because you would apply based on your, like what office you would actually be interested in working in. And so for, if we look at this past January, we had um, three teams in Calgary. Um, and so like three teams of five and, uh, and yeah, so then you work together. Um, like it's, it's kind of a weekend thing. You have a workshop and then you actually work on um, your, your project essentially. And then you present on the second day, very similar to like a, a pretty time crunched case call. Totally. And are there prizes? Yes, um, for participating, you got, we got some swag. I actually have this thing on my desk that I personally have not yet used, but it's like, a, here, I'll show it to you. It's like one of those, um, Love a swag. like UV, like sanitizer. Charger oh, seats. very nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always get the swag as a recruiter. Which is <laughs> yes, you need to know how it works and like the benefits otherwise. Exactly, exactly. What, how else can I speak to it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get that. And then the winning team. Um, so what's cool about kick is it's also a global competition. So, um, we, so there's the regional piece. So Calgary is competing against Calgary. So the three teams, and then there was one winner from those three teams and that was happening across the country. So all the winners in each, uh, regional, uh, competition then moved on to nationals. So like Calgary, there's one team representing mm. Calgary, one team representing Montreal. And then, so you present to like some pretty higher ups from a national perspective. Um, like one of the judges was our, like the head of our management consulting practice. Nice. So, so pretty cool and some really good exposure. Yeah. Um, actually last year in 2020, the Calgary team won the national competition, which is amazing. Um, unfortunately COVID happened and they didn't get to travel. They were supposed to go to South Korea, um, for the globals. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So this year, of course it was all virtual. Our Montreal team won the nationals and went to represent Canada, uh, in the globals. And so you like compete against New Zealand and, um, like, uh, maybe Germany. I think there's like a number of, of different countries that you're competing against. It's, it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Now, um, mm -hmm. Last like direct plug for travel and KPMG perhaps, um, but I just, of um, anecdotally of my colleagues who I kind of came up with, um, the ones, you know, cause I went through recruiting and you kind of heard, oh, like, you know, we, we support travel, we support travel. And it's not that the firms don't, it's just that I never saw um, necessarily as many opportunities. I'd say anecdotally, um, I saw a lot of my friends um, from KPMG go to, um, uh, Australia for six months or, and then it got extended, ended up being for like over a year, maybe 18 months. Um, yeah. and like, she was happy about it. This wasn't that, <laughs> oh, it got extended and she got like, <laughs> oh, poor her. No, she was like, this is great. Do I have to come home? And then I had, um, friends from KPMG from uh, Calgary's office go to Amsterdam for six months. Um, England, I think for like a couple years. So it was really cool, especially because mm -hmm like um different employment places in different cycles um you know by the time you commit yourself to four plus years for your undergrad and you are you know doing your cpa designation like we are amongst people that are really 
you know, high driving, high achievers, you know, even if you don't think of yourself as one, like the fact that you are there, um, you are. So oftentimes when you think of who gets those opportunities, you think, oh, it's going to be that like, you know, 0.001%. It's the person that memorized the handbook. It's, you know, this and that. And I can say like, it's, it's not like it's, not. it's the well-rounded people. It's the people that can go into different situations and adapt and mm -hmm. learn. It's not about being quote smart. It's about, you know, bringing the whole package and bringing your coming as you are. <laughs> Coming as you are, exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> would that be like similar to what you've seen? Can you confirm or deny my anecdotes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I absolutely can. It's definitely, um, we had a number of people who unfortunately were set to do a what we call a, a secondment, a global secondment um, in the last year. And that was, was thwarted, but hopefully we'll get to um, in the future. But yeah, we've got a mix. Um, like we have a ton of um, individuals in the Calgary office who, a lot who have done a London secondment, um, a lot who have done New Zealand or Australia, and you can do short term um, or you can do long term. And uh, yeah, so a lot of really cool opportunities. And even, um, you know, before you officially start with the firm too, we even have some summer internship, global travel opportunities. Like we've had summer interns go to Australia or to, um, I want to say Amsterdam. Um, and uh, yeah, so plenty, like it's, it's a popular thing to do. Um, and that's a great thing about going into audit, do your CPA. You just need to be, you know, a, an effective employee and you can basically go work anywhere in the world for a period of time. My friend, um, she's, uh, she's a partner. And I asked her uh, one time what a piece of advice that I could share with my learners. Like when they're like, what do employers want? What do partners want? How can I be a partner? Or like, you know, and I just said, yo, like, what's your piece, like one piece of advice, hot seat. And she was like, show up, do like, do what's asked, do like what's part of the job, um, have a good attitude and do that, you know, most days to the best of your abilities and you will stand out because it's about consistency. It's about, mm -hmm. you know, having good attitude a lot of times. And I think what people sometimes are reluctant to talk about, but our learners have, you know, 12 months of co-op before they graduate. So they're probably a little bit more um, in tune with this, but like, sometimes you do work that's not the most mentally stimulating. So, um, but it needs to get done, right? Mm -hmm. And we've all been there and done that, but then it leads to other things. What does this lead to? And what am I learning from this? Like you can, you know, you can audit revenue for an afternoon. And if you don't want to learn anything, you maybe won't and you can still get it done, but you know, you won't be able to bring new insights and like learn and really it stretches out the time. Whereas you can sit in an afternoon audit revenue and be like, wow, like you can feel accomplished, get the job done, like be effective, um, do it with a good attitude. Cause you know, somebody has to do it and you took, you took it for them this time. And then maybe next time, because you've done that learning and you understand how it works, maybe you can pitch a, you know, a more effective or more interesting or more robust um, procedure. And then maybe you're supervising the person that's doing it. So I, I, yeah, I think that's great. And I think that, uh, that eagerness to learn and that curiosity, um, just like, I know you, like one question you would kind of mention that you might ask is, is about success Yeah. and, and there's not one definition of success and, mm. and success looks different to everybody. And I think the example you just said, you know, um, revenue, you know, just kind of going through the motions, getting through it, marking the day as done um, versus, you know, actually engaging in what you're doing. I think, I think that in and of itself is an example of success um, and successfully getting something like that done. And then understanding it, willing to, willing to understand it and learn from it and then having that ability then to to coach and teach someone else how to do it um i think that's and that's a very crucial part of this job you know is because you move up quickly and you you need to understand how things are done why they're being done and then explain that to somebody else Absolutely. and that's yeah and i think in medicine it's called like oh sorry no go ahead sam oh in medicine i think it's called like watch one do one teach one <laughs> yes I think I learned that from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I stole it. And in class, I was like, learn to teach, learn to teach. <laughs> exactly. And that was one thing that was um, really interesting to me 
starting out at the firm was in my first year, um, starting out really liked it. It was just so cool. You're starting with all these young people and people who are like you and, and you're all in the same boat working hard. And then kind of, if I'm being perfectly honest, towards the end of my first year, I was not liking the work at all. I was bored. Mm. I, I didn't enjoy it. And then October hits and I'm a second year and we have our new batch of first years coming in. And I all of a sudden get the opportunity to coach and show them how to do things. And all of a sudden my perspective totally changed. I was saying things and I was like, I actually learned this. I know what I'm doing kind of, and having that ability to then coach and, and teach. And, and that just made my, made my job so much more enjoyable. And it was finally that it kind of clicked that, okay, even though I feel like I haven't come that far, I actually have. And uh, so kind of realizing that and, and finding those, those things that you enjoy about your job and, and focusing on those pieces is, is really important and really great. Yeah. So you put in the work um, and then you end up learning along the way, even if you don't necessarily notice it day in and day out. Yeah, exactly. So going back to our macro level, um, we're in March. We just wrapped up. <laughs> Tara, we're going to bounce around a lot because I am coming back because I, I want you to define success for me. But so I love that you brought up um, for like your own personal one. And if it ends up being the same answer, whatever. But I'm, we're going to circle back to that. But now we're circling back to KISS. By the way, I think linear is overdone and boring. And that's not how our minds think. And not how I think anyways. Um, no. Okay, so we're at the end of the global <laughs> competition. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what does it look like after that's been wrapped up for you? Um, so as we head into March, I would say things start to pick up a little bit more. Um, and that will be um, with either spring recruiting. Um, and so that, um, to preface Calgary, we didn't do a full spring recruiting cycle this year, but a lot of the other offices will. Um, but instead of spring recruiting, we started recruiting for our national conference executive look. So that happens every year in the summer. In July, we just had it last week um, virtually. And uh, so starting in the spring is applications open for that. Um, it's, a, it's a more rigorous application interview process than we are looking at for KIC. Um, and basically, for the most part, we're looking for students interested in a summer internship or a co-op. And basically, if you are successful through the application interview process, you will get an, uh, an invitation to the conference. And along with that, you will also get a job offer. Nice. And so would that, that be for that summer or for the a following period? The conference would be for that year, um, but the offer for the job would be the following year. Cool. Yeah, because right. we're always recruiting well in advance. That's, so that's another thing I was wondering yeah. is like, yeah. there's, there's so many things that have changed since perhaps I, you went through, but definitely since when I went through um, that it's like, so you're doing this, even though it's like starts in March and you're probably working for a few months, the conference is in July and then the co-op or internship is for the following um, like May. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You got it. So um, yeah, so that's one thing too that I think being in this world, I'm sometimes not as sensitive to, but because what's nice about accounting is there is this kind of structured recruiting process. And, but that's only helpful if you're plugged in or you're talking to the right people, Yeah. right? Because for a lot of students, they might not realize that, oh, it's 2021 and I'm looking for something for 2022. I got to get on the ball. Yeah. I got to know that that's coming. And so that, that is was hard. Me. I went because somebody was like, Hey, are you going to this recruiting event? I'm like, what's a recruiting event? <laughs> and they're like, you better go. And I was like, is there food? <laughs> and they're just like, there's food. So, so we went. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That's exactly it. And, and so that's continuing, like, that's always part of my role is bringing that awareness. So talking to uh, you know, profs such as yourself, um, career center advisors. So, and, you know, uh, different student associations, um, using social media. And it's all about that awareness and making sure that students know because we want you to apply. We want you to come to us, but you can only do that if you know what's going on. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You can so only go to South Korea and like have a chance to compete against other university students if you know about it. So you know it. yeah, yeah, no, that's a, it's definitely, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So we have completed um, the summer cycle. And mm -hmm. when would that wrap up about 
Um, so for us this year, it wrapped up like about May is when we completed interview, sent out offers. And again, that would be for, for July is when the uh, conference itself <laughs> take place. So we've just wrapped that up. Um, and then if we go back to May too, uh, that's when our summer interns start. So right. Yes. That's something that I'm, I oversee and it's a, a really fun time in the office when, when the summer interns okay. start. It's a great new batch of students and uh, always really excited to be there. Um, and so a lot of fun stuff that comes with that. And then they're typically with us um, until August sometime. Nice. Okay. Um, so then what are you, what are you working on kind of now and in the foreseeable future? So we're heading into our recruiting busy season as the, what we call our fall recruitment cycle is our, is our busiest cycle. It's when we, so again, we're in 2021, but we're doing all our hiring for 2022. Mm -hmm. Yep. For okay. almost like gotcha. so in some, in some uh, scenarios, for like over a year in advance. And so, uh, yeah, again, this is a very busy time for us. So right now we're in planning mode. Our application, I'll put this plug in here now, our applications open August 20th. What? Yeah. Amazing. So, okay. Good to know. Which is in like a month, which blows my mind. Send me so, an email and we'll link it down in the show notes so that if people are okay. curious and checking, want to check it out, they can check it out. So Perfect. Perfect. I don't have a link at this time, no, but whatever. I we'll can certainly put the information, the date and yeah. the link for where it will be. Perfect. Um, yeah. So that's coming up. So basically everything that comes along with that, you know, we plan info sessions, we plan socials, we plan uh, webinars, things basically, again, to kind of raise that awareness, tell people, tell students about KPMG, what we're all about, why you should apply for us. Um, so all of that while the application leading up to when the posting opens and while, while it's open until it closes kind of early September. I'm just speaking of early, so a number of students, and I've heard this in the past, um, would ask me, well, I still have a whole year's worth of accounting classes left to do. Um, how can I apply for an accounting job when I still have a year's worth of accounting classes? Like, how do you answer that? <laughs> that's a great question. And that's something um, that we always tell students, especially for students applying for a co-op or a summer internship, is we know you're only in your second year potentially and that you've done maybe management accounting and that's it. And that's fine because you're going to be in the same boat as everybody else. And also we set you up for success when you start with the firm, even when you're doing your co your co-op or internship, you're going to get some audit training. You might not even know what audit is and that's okay. Uh, you're going to learn on the job and you're going to figure it out and we're not expecting you to come in knowing everything. So, and, and one thing too, also from a work experience, we're not looking for a bunch of interns and co-ops who have all this office and accounting experience. Mm. A lot of you, a lot of them will have, you know, restaurant experience or, or they've worked um, as a, as a tutor or what have you. Or volunteer so, experience or yeah, it's very, it's very totally. And we just want to see that experience mm. and know that you have it and know that you um, maybe are sometimes juggling school and work or school and volunteer, school and clubs yes. uh, kind of stuff. So it's not what it is, but it's, it's that you have it. Yes. Um, I think that just demonstrating that time management, that, that ability to kind of, yeah, I don't want to say juggle, but like, you know, manage and prioritize and wake up in the morning and have like a couple of things to do. I can see that being mm -hmm. very transferable skill. So speaking to just the fourth years who might be looking for positions um, for the following fall, uh, 2022 mm -hmm. for full-time roles, if they mm -hmm. have very um, limited, not limited accounting, but like they basically follow like, let's just speak to our Dallas students. Um, they have, you know, intermediate one, they have cost management, all their intro courses, and they're going to have, you know, a number, they're going to have audit um, and some financial reporting classes and tax um, between in the following year. So how, like, are they even going to be able to apply for jobs in the fall if they don't have that experience, even though they will have that experience by the time they graduate and start, are they like, how does that work? You know, that's really interesting. And it's funny because for us, it's just a non-issue. So I, I never think about that because again, 
all the fourth year accounting students are going to be, you know, in the same position. And so what we do is um, we do look at GPA. We don't have a cutoff, but we do look at it and we look at that with your transcripts. And basically we'll look at your accounting courses and we just want it for with the ones that you do have. And we want to make sure you're doing okay in them because we, that's one thing, especially with the time management and, and mm -hmm. all that, we want to make sure that you're going to be successful in the CPA program. Mm -hmm. So we're just looking at that. And so we're, we understand that you're going to have, you know, your final tax class, probably audit um, yeah. to do in your last year. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, They'll have some financial reporting too, and some strategy. Like there's some pretty like heavy hitting classes that I know uh, it, it is funny because you're like, that doesn't even cross my mind. Of course you wouldn't have all your classes. You're in fourth year. There's still another yeah. year. Um, but, uh, and it goes to sometimes the research and the literature um, that especially females, like uh, women, we will wait until we have all the skills um, before we apply. Um, and I'm, I don't know exactly the literature of how that translates to students, but, you know, very conscientious of saying, well, like, I, maybe I should wait a year until then, but it's like, no, 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 come as <laughs> you are. Yeah. <laughs> Catchphrase of the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. yeah title. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do my part to help him. He's such a superstar. He like comes up with the best titles. <laughs> like, okay, perfect. We we saved him, saved him that task. Um exactly. So that's interesting that you say that because yeah, you definitely see. I wonder if you know that sometimes why students they don't apply until later on. So they're like, oh well, I wasn't done, but it's no, this is honestly, just kind of how things work in this industry, that uh, you're going to be given an offer a year in advance. We're expecting it's it's in your offer letter that you complete those courses. Mm -hmm. and, and from a CPA perspective, you need to maintain a minimum average. And so as long as you're doing that, you're good. And we know that you're getting those courses done. Um, and it's more so when you're going through the application interview process with us, ahead of you completing those courses, um, we're looking at stuff outside of the academic side of things. Yeah. So it it's all- Tell them know, about your all... interests. Like, do you have, um, I don't know, what's a, I, I once taught a student who had a YouTube channel with like, I think you said like 9 million like other views or just, I don't know, it was insane. And I was like, I was like, what, what do you YouTube? <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> video games. And I was like, you play video games and stream them and people watch you and he's like yes and I was like cool like he's like I do he's like I started making videos for like my family and then they shared them and then they just wanted to know what I was doing on the weekend and I'm like that is such a neat like neat insight into somebody right absolutely yeah I remember the first time I heard about that the YouTube video game thing and it was like people make money off of this people do this <laughs> Um, it's very, yeah, very interesting. Um, and it's, it's just, it's different and unique because, so I had one student, he's like, what, um, what courses should I take? He's like, I have a free option or I can take an extra course or I have, I don't know, I have some extra time. What can I take, um, to help me with my CPA? And I was like, honestly, go do something that like, and I think it was some time in relation to like, what would help him be more employable or give him other options. I was like, go do something that like makes you want to get up in the morning and learn it or do it or have fun. Because, you know, I once spent an interview, um, I played competitive rugby when I, when I was interviewing. Um, and we spent, I think, 25 out of 30 minutes talking about like, um, I was explaining rocks and hitting and tackling. Um, and my like the interviewer, I left there thinking like, oh my gosh, I just, I, I did so bad. Like I didn't talk about accounting. I and then I got it like a phone call that day, like, oh, it was so lovely to talk to you. <laughs> oh so like, yeah, you, you know, don't, there's not, like you said, anyways, I, I'm so much about all just like, you know, you do you and mm -hmm. um, it's a value add, which is super cool. Okay. So that's, that's awesome that students don't have to worry about um, <laughs> having all the boxes ticked. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think now I do want to know how, like, what was it difficult to make the decision to leave your last role, like to leave um, the assurance practice and to transition into talent acquisition? I wouldn't say it was difficult. I mean, it was always something that I, I knew I was going to do. Um, I knew that I was going to stick with audit for basically as long as I could. And 
But because of my kind of background in HR, that was my major, I knew that HR was where I wanted to eventually land. So for me, it was a little bit easier than say someone who maybe kind of stumbled into HR or campus recruiting, which happens like sometimes a um, a mat leave position will open up and a manager from audit will come over to, to help out. So for me, it was easy and, and it made it particularly easy because I had done um, a secondment um, in campus last year. Um, I'd actually, I've done a few. I'd done a few throughout my kind of four years in audit. I basically nice. spent time in campus and HR whenever I could, whenever my schedule allowed it. So another great thing about about KPMG in our office, they're very supportive of that kind of stuff. You work hard, so, yeah. You'll get some flexibility. Yeah, exactly. And so for me, I had done, so I was helping out with our fall cycle last year. So from August to October, I was booked fully on campus recruiting. I wasn't doing any audit at that time. And so in October, when I went back into audit, it was at that time I was like, I'm ready to make the full-time transition. And then things just moved really well in our office. This role opened up and I was able to move into it. So the timing was honestly great. Um, and so for me, no, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Uh, but I can see, you know, it's always a big move to, to make that kind of transition. And, uh, you know, you're, you've spent all your time in one thing and now, and I would say certainly around kind of the four or five year mark, I know a lot of um, my friends and people I know are, I feel like we're going through this transition period a little bit. I mean, COVID's one thing, um, but also just kind of when you got to that four or five year mark in your career, you start to reevaluate and say, well, do I want to continue doing this? Do I want to be doing something else? Should I be doing something else? Um, and so the timing uh, just before Christmas was great because I was at that point where I was ready to do something different. Cool. Um, Casey, how old are you? I'm 26. 26. So I started teaching and I feel like at 26, 27. Um, and I feel like what you do a lot is, um, you know, has lots of elements of teaching and you already talked about the coaching of like juniors and, and whatnot. Um, is there anything like, what's your experience been with, um, people asking you questions? Do you find like they're, they're pretty like good to open up to you and ask like what's coming from your summer interns right now? Okay. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, I would say, yeah, the summer interns are, I, I hope that we make a very open environment for them to, to ask questions. And, you know, we set them up with like a peer buddy. So someone from in their first or second year, relatively new to the firm, and they can go to them for, you know, what, you know, for lack of a better term, they're all their dumb questions, which there aren't any. There's they're none, but like, yeah, when they think, oh, I, where's the yeah. bathroom? <laughs> Sorry, this is a silly question. It's like, no, you ask any and everything. Um, it makes you just started here. You're a third year student. Of course, you don't know the answer to this. Um, so that's definitely something that we preach at KPMG and KPMG Calgary is ask questions, ask them, ask them, ask them. And so, um, and, and you want to, whenever someone comes to you with questions, you want to make sure you're giving them the space to, to do so because you always have to turn it and say, well, I want that same thing when I'm going to someone for questions. Absolutely. And we're always trying to learn. We're always like, especially in this new role, like I knew campus recruiting pretty well from my time that I had spent in it. But as I started this role, of course I discovered there was so much I didn't know and just the little things. And, and when I, when someone comes to me and asks and I'm like, Oh, I actually don't know how that works. And then I have to go ask someone. So I want to make sure. Oh, I love that you say, I don't know, because that is like a signal of an expert really in, or in a curious mind. It's like, you know, that's, that's great. That's, I don't know. That's a really good one. And then people yeah. don't think, Oh, she should know. No, they're like, Oh, I asked a tricky one. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. You're kind of like you so building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there's always, and you don't know what you don't know. And uh, so yeah, having that, as you say, yeah, curious mind and, and always that eagerness, even if you don't know, go figure it out. Like go ask people, go use your resources and do that research to then find the answer. And then you, and that's only going to make you better. Absolutely. So it sounds like you do a lot of work. Is there any time for fun in here? 
Oh yes. And feel free yes. to correct me. If you're like, <laughs> you know, I, I do um, effective work. It's not like, above, <laughs> but like, yeah. Is there any room for fun in there, Casey? Absolutely. I'm a big, I focus very much on, on having a life outside of work and I love my work and love the people I work with, but no, I, um, I, my family is from Calgary. So I've got family here. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, friends from, from high school and people I grew up with are still in Calgary and I like to do things. I, um, I like to get up to the mountains. I like to be active. And so, and that's honestly been one nice thing about working from home is like squeezing in a run or, you know, going for a walk when I'm on a call, things like that. So no, I'm very much all for all of that stuff. And if it sounds like I work more than I do, that's not the case. <laughs> not, like, for this podcast, we're talking about your work and your experience. Um, so yeah, I kind of say that in jest or, you know, maybe not in jest, like, <laughs> what, what do you have time for? Because there's been periods in my life where if somebody asked me that, I'd be like, Ooh, all right. Good. I'll get back to you. <laughs> I'll solve that because it makes us better. It's just like training at the gym, right? Like you need off days, like you need to work hard and you need to replenish and refuel and, you know, and yeah, it's all important. Um, totally. there's no, there's no, what is it? Badge of honor any, anymore. I don't think. And I don't think it's a culture mm-hmm. anymore to say like, Oh, I worked, you know, 70. Well, I worked 80. Well, I worked 90. It's like, well, what the F did you do during those 70? And could it have been 30? Like, could it have been 35? Exactly. Like, could you have asked me for help? Like it not all work is created equal and not just all work, but like the way in which we work. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, when you were saying the themes, I thought you were going to say smarter, not harder, which is one that I annoy. Yes. Yeah. And you'd mentioned that, mentioned that earlier. And I, I totally agree. I feel that there was certainly, and especially I think within the accounting industry that, you know, was always something people felt like they had to hit this threshold of hours. And honestly, I think the pandemic has almost been really good for that because our push for realizing the importance of mental health and that, especially when people feel like they're strapped to their laptop at home and that they can't go, you know, have that separation and the importance that we have put on that and, you know, giving our people time off and making sure that we're emphasizing that separation. And like, we need that. We need that as humans. And it's not fun to be constantly working and constantly tied to your phone or to your laptop. Um, And it makes, if you have a set number of hours to focus on work, you're going to be more productive. You're going to be more effective and then more time for the fun stuff. Absolutely. So what options, I know you just, you know, you're not like new, new in your role, you're well enough in, and maybe it's premature to ask this question, but what are your future plans or options that you're considering? Uh, so I definitely want to be in this role for, for a little while, um, especially going through uh, the pandemic and having mostly everything virtual where, you know, the in-person stuff in this role is a lot of fun. And I want to get back to that. So having kind of the comparison of doing mostly virtual and then hopefully getting back to mostly in person, it's definitely going to be, I think, a hybrid model moving forward. Nothing's going to be the same. We're, we're reinventing what things look like. Um, there's not really going to be, well, there's going to be pre-COVID and post-COVID, but they're not going to look the same. And so uh, as of right now, though, I'm really happy with KPMG. It's a great firm. I've been treated really well. And so I don't have any plans to leave. Um, what I would like to see kind of in the next few years is, um, I've got this talent attraction side of things. I don't see, I don't necessarily see myself in recruiting for forever. I would love to eventually move to the talent management side of things. Um, that's what's cool about HR. And that was, I think one of the things that drew me to it was there are so many different avenues and a lot of avenues that you wouldn't maybe think fall under the HR umbrella. Uh, mm-hmm. so I think the opportunities are pretty, pretty endless. One thing as we were talking about kind of global opportunities, that's one thing that I do want to strive towards. And I, and I didn't know it was possible within HR, but I think it is. Um, and so I would love to go work somewhere else, live somewhere else for, for a period of time too, in the next maybe three to five years. Love it. Love it. I, I tend to say like when people come for like advice or just chit chat or like, I don't know what I want to do. And I was like, cool. Like, it's okay. Like we're all making, yeah, nobody does. Nobody does. 
I think we're all making it up as we go and that's okay because mm -hmm. as we go along hopefully we're collecting more tools and we're investing in ourselves and like in your early 20s in my early 20s we invested a significant amount of time to gain that skill set to gain that designation and then we can aim it in a number of different directions and then even if we aim it somewhere if we change our mind that's cool that skill set travels with us to the next thing and the next mm -hmm. thing and it's okay. Just like this podcast, it doesn't, nor should it be linear. <laughs> okay. So um, we are getting to the last little bit of this because you have dedicated so much time and I so, so thank you. So, um, any book recommendations, um, for students or recent grads, um, that you might have or podcast, like it can be podcasts or playlists or just something that you were like, students should know about this. You know, one thing, um, and I know this isn't probably as, as glamorous, but uh, one thing that I, I've been listening to a lot more podcasts recently, um, there's some really cool tech ones. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just like, and I feel like so topical. So there's one called Land of the Giants. Ooh, okay. I'm writing it down. And there's a few seasons. The first season is all about Amazon. Um, the second season is all about Netflix. Uh, the third season is all about Google. Um, and it's really fascinating. And actually the fourth season just launched and it's all about um, food delivery apps, like DoorDash and oh, yeah, yeah. dishes. Very fascinating. So um, I find that stuff really interesting and it's stuff that we deal with in our everyday lives. Uh, so, so very relevant. Um, another couple that I really like too, I'm trying to, I want to find one that's more uh, Canadian based, but I listen to the daily, so that's from the New York Times, and they're just and same with um, Today Explained, and they're quick, like twenty to thirty minute, um, basically summaries of different things that are going on in the world. A lot more targeted sometimes towards the U.S., but it's like a really good way to learn. Like if you heard about something briefly on social media or in the news, and you're like, oh, I don't really know about that. There's typically a podcast um, on one of them, and then you'll learn more in depth about it. And the guy on Today Explained is Canadian. He's originally from Toronto. So I always like listen. I like listening to him. Absolutely. Oh, I love this. Cool. Um, thank you for the recommendations. I am okay. too a fan of podcasts. And uh, yes. I tend to switch out my mediums because, you know, reading versus listening versus keeps it fresh, keeps it interesting. You can, like you said, go for a walk or like do other things clean, like while you're listening. Whereas reading, um, sometimes I get tired reading, right? So oh. it's I always fall asleep when I mean, <laughs> even if it's a really good book. Yeah. It's um, very relaxing. <laughs> yes. It's more intentional sitting down and reading a book versus, you know, popping in the podcast. Do you have any, uh, do you have a top podcast that you recommend for Ooh, me? I have um, been listening to Lex Friedman um, for the last like year or so and like um, sending links every once in a while to students through my news, news posts. Um, he is a former MIT professor. Um, mm -hmm. who is uh, an artificial intelligence professor and he has a podcast. He did five um, episodes uh, where he was a guest on the Joe Rogan podcast, which is really oh. fascinating to me because Joe Rogan has had over 84 academics on there. So that's been fascinating. And where I find it extra interesting is he is like so smart. Um, yet when you hear him talk in long form, like as in audio, um, or audiovisual um, becomes relatable and you see the human behind it. So I start getting interested into other um, things that he, through his eyes and through his lens um, and he's an educator. So mm -hmm. he's able to kind of explain and, and have the conversation that it's a value add. So I've loved learning about, um, you know, different artificial intelligence uh, through his lens. He had on um, Ryan Hall twice, who is a jujitsu jiu practitioner who just fought this past uh, Saturday at the UFC. Um, so just a wide smattering. And then Andrew, uh, Dr. Andrew, Andrew Huberman, he is a, oh my goodness. Um, oh, I'm going to, I, something bio, the bio neurologist, I believe, or oh, he's going to get mad if you ever, yeah, he will get mad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he talks all about like the body and the brain and anyways, to change your mind, you know, change your physiology. So, you know, if you're in a slump and a rut, if you can't like get work done, go for a walk, like physically changing your scenery and your, mm -hmm. um, your body will help change your mind. And just that relationship between the two. So he goes into depth, um, wow. but it's, it's very at the level that you feel smarter and more accomplished because it's relatable and the education geek in me. 
Um, he talks in ways, and he actually says, like, if you are an expert, you should be able to drill down or zoom out and explain at different, you know, levels and different um, abilities. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm a better teacher because I'm watching him teach in his field. So amazing. Yeah. Okay. I'll check those out. Dr. Andrew Huberman. Yes. He, his podcast is the Huberman lab. Okay. Noted. (laughs) Man, thank you. Always love any recommendation. Oh yeah. No. And I am going to be checking out that daily show and, um, land of the giants. I like it. Uh, okay. So last, last question. I told you I was going to circle back to this. Um, we've talked about defining success in general for other people. Casey, how do you define success? What is your definition of success? So I, it's a, I was kind of having this conversation. I went for a coffee this morning with um, the woman who used to be in this role, and now she's in a different uh, HR role um, in our office. And talking about because we're you know coming up to our our year end review, so we're going up through that all all that performance um, cycle stuff. And it's so easy to get caught up on you know number ratings or uh, you know how you're defined by say the firm or your superiors. And I'm all for recognition. I think a lot of verbal recognition, frequent, consistent, timely recognition is really important and it drives, drives motivation and, uh, you know, finding that intrinsic motivation as well as extrinsic motivation Mm -hmm. is so important. And, uh, so, but trying to balance that between, you know, not, you don't need the, you know, the bonus or something like that to, to hopefully feel motivated. And so for me, I would say success is one feeling accomplished, like having something on a to-do list and, and marking it off. Even if that's a small task, I think getting those things done and knowing, and when you feel good about your day and, and that you got all these things done, that's, that's great. And I, I feel those little moments of success when I, when I can do that. Um, for me, more broadly, I guess, success I would define as as having having a plan, knowing that plan might not go according to plan, um, but feeling good about where I'm at, having a positive impact on people, and that's probably the the most important success is is having those relationships with people and seeing when I can do something for them and create that positive impact, whether that be from on a personal level or a professional level. And, and uh, because you love working with people that you have a good relationship with and you enjoy talking to them. And so when I know that people can come to me for something um, and know a, that I'll get it done, but also it'll hopefully be enjoyable working together. Um, I think that's, that's a really good measure of success for, for me personally. I like that. And it, part of that, that really stood out was having a plan and knowing and being okay, if, and when that plan changes, Mm -hmm. um, and then working to, yeah. And then all that, you know, working towards it and feeling good and building relationships and people No, this is been so so lovely I'm glad um that you agreed to uh record our catch-up because I feel like that's what it is this is what we would have been talking about (laughs) had had it been just the two of us on here Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well thank you so much for for inviting me on and for for having me on this I haven't done anything like this before uh so I mean great having (laughs) catch-up of course but uh no, this has been, this has been such a pleasure. If students want to reach out, either they're interested in KPMG or they're interested in hearing more about you and, and maybe they're feeling like lost or they, they want, they connected with something in this podcast. Um, a, can they reach out and B, if so, how? Uh, yes, please. Um, always reach out. Um, LinkedIn is probably the best way I can be bad about checking it sometimes, but bear with me. I will get back to you. Um, and you know, if anyone reaches out to you directly, Sam, um, please feel free to give them my email directly. Um, I'm more than okay. Happy. So I will link below your LinkedIn. And if anybody emails me, um, then, uh, and you know, and has either a good question or a very kind email, uh, for Casey, I will absolutely, um, forward it on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thanks, Sam. You too.